morning to all you Leos. Welcome for your monthly horoscope for Leo for October 2014. Now October is very important for the eclipse month and um, but also because Mercury goes retrograde so that's a bit of the, a team here. And the eclipses occur on the, uh, on the 8th of October which is a, a fellow fire sign of Aries and Aries eclipse and also on the 23rd of October, it's this, um, this solar eclipse, partial eclipse in Scorpio. Now, what does that mean for, um, for the Leos? Now, the lunar eclipse is more important because it's a total eclipse. And you won't feel them on those particular days. It's, it's kind of an energy that um, is spread all over the month, but also a bit of the month before in September. And also afterwards. And what does it mean? The, the flavor, you could say, of this uh, eclipse is about breaking free, breaking free of old patterns. Now for you Leos, this is uh, not such a challenging um, thing because the eclipse, the, the moon is in Aries, which is a fellow Aries sign. And um, you've got this, this triplicity in the fire signs of Mars being in Sagittarius, working together with Uranus in, uh, in Aries, and then Jupiter in your sign. So you pretty much have this protection, you could say almost. And also it's in houses that have to do with thinking. So um, this eclipse and this Mercury retrograde as well is happening in your thinking houses. So it, it, it's not so drastic as someone should have this in angular houses, for instance, the first house or the seventh house or the fourth or the tenth. So it's pretty much a good energy for Leos. And um, especially if you're that kind of Leo, who have been uh, dealing with a lot of Saturn lately, because Saturn is now in your, in Scorpio, which is in your fourth house and which is all about um, uh, Saturn there it squares up to your sign it's uh, all the fixed signs are having a bit of a heavy Saturn transit at this time and so for the people the, the Leos who are feeling stuck somewhere it's really a good time now in October to free that open to free yourself up of old patterns now these old patterns that I talk about um, this is the eclipse that I'm talking about, is the following. There are two things important. First of all, the Moon and the Uranus conjunction. That is important. That's happening in Aries. For you, that's your ninth house. And on the other hand, there's the Venus opposite the Moon. Venus opposite Moon in um, uh, during the eclipse. What does it mean? Well, everyone knows that when there are times that we feel very... Uh, very much contradiction, contradiction uh, in emotions. For instance, we want something, but we need something else. Or what we need is not uh, what we want. And then it creates um, stress and it uh, creates discontent. And for you, this is happening in the houses of communication. This is happening in the house of your thinking processes. The, the bigger picture that you have of your life, the bigger view, the transcendency of, your, of the live events, you could say, and of your life versus the day-to-day -day, uh, on a mental level dealing with, with what you're dealing with. And well, so what is the key here? What is, the, or what is uh, important here to know or what is the advice? Well, the advice is when there is an opposition, there's always stress that that is there for a reason that wants to be acknowledged and that wants to be integrated. That's basically it. And what needs to be integrated here is the moon conjunct Uranus, is the, these new patterns that are trying to emerge. And for you, it has to do with the ninth house. So this moon Uranus, this uh, restless energy that wants to break up old patterns has to do with ninth house. So you could say, oh, look, ninth house is not important, but it, it does, um, it is a house of the higher consciousness. It is a house of your views. Your view and your beliefs is so important because the ninth house is like, if that's okay, the whole uh, horoscope uh, benefits from it. In other words, if you are in a line 
with, if you don't believe in God, with your higher self, with your best self, you could say, or if you believe in God, with God or with the divine or with um, the universe. And it's about that. It's about your belief system. What do you believe in? And there are some old patterns that are not fulfilling itself anymore. So maybe you are going to not, maybe for some it will be drastic to change their beliefs. There's really cutting off old beliefs in order for them to emerge new, new ones. But uh, it doesn't have always to be that drastic. It depends on how you've been acting before that. But it is true that when people have that, like Uranus and, and the moon there in the ninth house, it's very independent uh, beliefs. And it's supposed to be like that. You, you, your belief system hopefully not clashing with, um, belief, with the way that, you, that, that, is, um, uh, that people think who are in your close environment. Because that's where your third house is, siblings, environment, uh, the community that you live in. So it's a time of um, when you have been suppressing your own beliefs because you wanted to align too much. Now is the time to, to look at your own beliefs and especially the ones that you suppress. So maybe you, are, you, maybe you believe in something and now you're totally doubting it and um, you're totally reviewing it and that can be sometimes for some people a bit of a crisis there because they, years and years and years they've believed in something whether it is astrology for instance someone who has always believed in it and then all of a sudden no my need is now another system another belief system or it could be the opposite Someone who has never believed in God, never believed in astrology, never believed in medicine, in, in alternative medicine, or never believed in um, classical medicine. Whatever the pattern used to be, it's about to shift. So it, it's very much uh, dependent on your personal, unique um, context, what you believe in. If there are things that you believe in and that you hold on to too strongly, and that is not longer suiting you. That is what is changing at the moment. So um, that's the basic. It doesn't mean what changes, but it's it's, it's the the um, evolution. You are ev evaluating towards a different belief. So that's pretty pretty much it. And um, also Mercury is in your third house. So. A lot of actually, I think it's going to be um, for most years a busy month, a busy month with Mercury there going retrograde. So um, it is often said with Mercury retrograde in the third house, do some backups before it even starts with your computer um, or with anything that has to do with restore of information. And the Mercury retrograde happens as from the fifth up until the twenty sixth. So. If you can, if you're watching this in September, make some backups now. Um, or just be aware that you, if you do some communications, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. It's just that uh, communication can go slower because you have to redo or simply because you think deeper. Uh, that's the Mercury retrograde, thinking deeper as well. And then last but not least, the Scorpio um, uh, uh, solar eclipse is a... Uh, it's partial, so I think it's less important, but it's in a crucial area of your life. It's in the fourth house, uh, which is your core, which is your identity, which is your emotional support, you could say, or <clears throat> it's a very deep core of yourself. And uh, so there are new beginnings there. So it fits in with the, the rest. You could say that if one changes their beliefs, the core beliefs, and to change one's beliefs, that's not easy. And, and that's not supposed to be easy either, but um, it means that on, in the core, there are going to be some new identities there created and maybe some old identities um, going away. So thanks a lot for uh, listening. If you want more detail of those eclipses, I made a separate video. You can click on the link below and uh, have a very good month. Bye-bye.